right word. Welcome, guys. Guys, guys, guys. Or only two guys. We don't have Maxi here today. Or CJ. Or CJ here today. CJ's moving into a new home. Maxi's preparing Ooh, for Christmas. Exciting. So uh, we're the only us. three people that yeah. have nothing else to do happening well, in our we life. Really kind of have stuff nothing to do. exciting happening. So yeah, this is like that girl that you have on the side, like when there's nothing else on, and you just go, "Hey, you doing anything? Wait, what? <laughs> Want to hook up?" <laughs> You know, doing anything? Ah, uh, cool. With Netflix and chill. Oh gosh! This is what this podcast is. Um, it's that do girl you realize that you what just... the chill actually means? Yes. I didn't. No one told. <laughs> yes, I know what the chill is. <laughs> so someone, I was saying, oh, what, like people would be like, "What are you doing tonight?" I'm just like, "Ah, oh, Netflix and chill, Netflix and chill." I literally think, "Oh, we meant like just chilling out." <laughs> and then a friend told me. Anyway, Anyways. we are here and. I guess this is like a Christmas slash New Year special. No, it's a New Year special. Okay. <laughs> no New slash. Year special. New Year special. <laughs> and we're going to... When, and when you mean special, what do you mean by special? I feel like it's special because it's, it's not on New Year's. normal. Yeah. And it's on New Year's. We are going to review our year. Well, we're going to... In... We're going we're gonna to do a few things on this uh, podcast. Oh. That's a bit different. There's okay. not going to be new articles. No, we're gonna, no we're gonna review the year yep. that we have. Actually, can you introduce? Have we introduced? I was gonna, when you kind of interrupted. All right, all right, you go introduce. So it. we are here. I'm Emma. I'm Devon. I'm Alexander. And we are your lovely B-side word hosts. And we are not going to bring you any interesting articles, but we are going to talk about our year in passing and our favorite. Bits, tidbits, bits, tidbits, and other stuff, apparently. Yeah. I don't know. Is there anything else you want to add, Alexander? Oh, I think, you know, just, just getting ourselves ready for 2020, isn't 2020. it? You know? There you go. I can't believe we're going into 2020. Um, Hello. You know, when people say that, I don't understand that. What? Like, what when you meet, like, when you say, I can't believe I actually can't. we're going into, like, someone has told me, I can you believe it's uh, uh December and we're, it's like, Four days away from Christmas. Okay, yeah, yeah. Because I looked at the date, and it was four days away from Christmas. You're yeah, the I, most I can't believe boring it. person. Do you know ever. what? Do you know what I think? Like where people get this from? Because like a decade, a decade is just an easy marker, isn't it? It's something that's easy to look at and go, yeah. All right, this this was like a a point in time. Um, and when you look back at the last decade, I think it's really easy to forget what happens in the span of a decade. Like what was it? Two thousand when this decade started, Instagram didn't exist. What? what? Like just to just to put something in perspective. So like what's gonna happen in the next decade? And but it's not even that. Like I can remember the millennium like it was yesterday. Like what do you I mean? don't You're understand. Taking You're taking it way the back. year two thousand like it was yesterday. The Y two K bug. The Y two K bug that was gonna shut down the world. That didn't. That didn't. And then there was gonna be a world ending. It wasn't. No. So it was an anticlimax. Yeah. So you remember the anticlimax? <laughs> but that was 20 years ago. Like, what? I don't know. For me, I just can't believe it. I'm one of those non believers. Yeah. So, so you're not smashing it. I think it's going to be good to see that. Because, like, this, I'll tell you what. Mm-hmm. Why, don't we, why don't we have a quick. Uh, what, do you, what do you think is going to happen in the next decade? 20, 20, 20, 30. What, what? Are, what are some things? Like, I'll put this out there. I think it's mm. qu- quite a certainty at this point. We're going to see an abundance of self-driving cars by the end of next decade. As in like the average person or taxis and stuff? As in like on the roads. Like you, I don't think you're going to be able to go on a journey that's more than 10 minutes without seeing a self-driving car. Oh, wow. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> so our kids, when they learn to drive, maybe learning how to drive a self-driving car. Oh man, Aiden, Aiden will be driving by the end of next decade. Yeah, All right. right. So 18? in ten years, he'll in be eighteen. Yep. Yeah. No, sixteen. Huh? Oh, seventeen. Seventeen. I think you can start learning at sixteen. Is it? Yeah, here? you can learn oh, at sixteen. But you can't take till seventeen or what? Seventeen. Something like that. I yeah, don't know. Something like that. That's, oh man, that's, that's scary. next decade. 
But so is there a possibility that he could be learning how to drive on a self-driving car? Wait. (laughs) (laughs) Say that again. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, you know what self-driving cars, do you have to actually... Do you need a drive. license? <laughs> Do you have to know how to drive? Like, let's say there was going to be an accident coming up and you have to suddenly take control of the car. Yeah, obviously. It's like um, like pilots, when they go up the air, they press autopilot, right? But they still got to be able to know how to fly the plane if the if the weather is like, like crap. They don't just press autopilot and they go, what do we do now? <laughs> what do we yeah, but do? Isn't, I had no I idea. I think that with cars, isn't that. the whole point of the self-driving car that it's safer than humans so if there was going to be an accident let it deal with it like surely it's going well, to deal with well that means it basically then the driver's license is going to become non just an id it's just going to become redundant because you won't even need to learn how to drive you just get in the car you just buy a car if they're going to be cool cars get in and it just takes you wherever you'll be able to just get in and go take me to school take me to yeah. work and it just takes you it's like think about um so uh like trains self driving trains like they already exist, don't they? Yeah. You're just a passenger, effectively. Like you don't. Yeah, but there's someone. There's a isn't there a driver there still? Sat there, yeah. Is there not? No, not all the time. Not all the time. Huh. Like you have different ones, don't you? So like um, for example, like airports and stuff, where they're like between terminals, they have self driving ones. What? Mm. Yeah, that well, when I like, um, Did- they're kind of like monorail types. Oh, the monorail, yeah, I get. But you. but they're like, you know, moving at speed. Like they're, they're, I don't know. I feel like self-driving cars. Like the bearing in mind they already exist now, yeah. where they'll be by twenty thirty. Like the rate of progression, and then you also have on top of that self-driving lorries, which yeah, if I've they're seen that. not I've seen, seen that. If, if they are to any extent like fully self-driving by 2030 and they're on the roads, like we're talking a huge economical shift because that's a lot of people losing jobs. A hell of a lot. Do, do you think... Because wait, they do you don't think need this to decade, Do you think this decade will be filled with the most change? We've seen so much change. But comparable to previous decades. <sighs> Yeah. I think it will be, I think, uh, like, economically, it will be a big shift. The way that well, we, I think that I, economics will run, like, how things will be run economically? Yeah, well, yeah. like, I think this decade, this past decade, I think there's been a lot of change. But I think it's just been, like, I think this decade has been the the change of technology being more integral to our daily life. Mm-hmm. Um so like real like realistically what I'm talking about is like phones, like how significant phones have become to your daily operation. Mm. It's literally in the just an extension decade, of your hand. Yeah. Like if you think about it, the iPhone came out in what, two thousand and seven? Yeah. And how like it, that's at the back end of the last decade, and it still by two thousand ten still wasn't that like it, it wasn't able to do that much. But if you think about now, how significant a phone is to your daily life. Oh man! Um, oh man! This is. Uh, so I think, I think that, by the end of the next decade, decade we'll have bionic things, and we can just. Um, oh, come on! No GPS will be in We're our not eyes. Cyborgs. We just had that article last week. We're not going to be cyborgs. That's what they're creating. Yes, but we're not going to be cyborgs. Well, people are already like implanting stuff in themselves, aren't they? Oh, human hacking! What's that? Human hacking? There you go. Biohacking. Oh, biohacking. Is that the one? I think it's biohacking. Yeah, mm. biohacking. Do you guys remember the Bridezilla episode where she was like, where she sent an email or a letter to all her, um, to like friends and family saying the rules, the rules of the day and like what they should wear and they should cut their hair if it oh, was yeah. too, do you remember? I do That's remember that. That was crazy. So, I, so what, d- what do you... Th- yeah. Go on. Oh, my gosh. I'm just looking through this list, and this list is just awesome. You Jussie know what this sm- list is? Jussie like- Smollett. Smollett. Oh, oh this, my gosh. This list, right, like I see this 
what we've the articles we've talked about, right? And this is uh, like a small portion of the ones that actually got, um, like, what do you call it? Uh, published. published. Yes. I can't believe how many, how much topics we've talked about. I know. Look, the US college scam, that was back in April. This is like a time capsule. I know. So were there any that, um, that have happened seeing how they've played out? Like, I'm just thinking about that college scandal, that in itself. Yeah, We've well, seen she got now in. more how that's played out. Did well, you? She got in, didn't she, legally? Did you see that, um, did you see that uh, actress that um, she started to gloat about how her daughter got in the right way and then she got backlash out of it? Did she get backlash out of it? Yeah, that's what I, I thought that's what I was talking about. No, she's like... <laughs> I don't know what her Instagram was, but she was so proud of her daughter because she got in the right way. She passed all the tests, she got good grades, and she didn't have to pay mm. pay for anyone to. No, no one heard about it. I I didn't that see a, that. You know what? I thought you would have definitely heard about this. This was like massive on Twitter. That's why I said, like I brought it up. So uh, I I this this whole thing about. Like the, I guess, virality of content. And I know this is something that we talked about. Um, remember the, the, the well, I forgot what the name of the challenge was, but we had the people dancing outside the car. And then, yeah. Oh, Kiki. Like the ghost ride the in whip. my feelings. Kiki, isn't it? The in oh. my feet. Oh, in my Kiki, feet. do you look? Yeah, yeah, in my feelings. That challenge. was our first episode. Um, was that the first episode? That was our first oh, episode. Oh. oh. But we talked, I just remember we talked about um, the idea of the internet. Like you see these things viral, but you just you, like you don't look out the window and see these things happen. Like they're not happening in real life in front of you. And like you're just saying to me, like you're surprised I hadn't seen this because it was huge on Twitter. So I, you know what I'm like. I'm a mass brain. I like numbers. I like looking at statistics and all yeah. this. So I just look at, I looked at the number of Twitter users. It is 321 million. So about the size of America's oh population, God. right? So when you take what could be considered something that's viral content. Like if something on Twitter has a hundred thousand likes, like you see that, that's viral. You you na- you don't assume, but like in your head you're kinda like it's like, like, you know, this this is viral, everyone's seen this. That I did the maths, zero point zero 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 three percent of Twitter users. Oh. So you're to make something go viral. What- no, I'm saying that's that's the amount of you, like hundred thousand. That's what that is to the amount of people on Twitter. Oh. So if you think about what is viral to you, majority of people have never seen it. Oh. Like the vast, significant majority of people have never seen it. But we consider that viral. See, see, that's the thing. That's why, oh. like, all these marketers and all these um, gurus and stuff, right? They say just to concentrate on your niche. Like putting that data into perspective, it's like. Everyone can get a piece of the pie of this internet um, and uh, this internet thing mm. that's out there, right? Because even if you get a very, very, very small portion, it's still enough <laughs> to be like a hit in that genre or that niche. That's crazy. Like, what, what was the number that you said? Point zero zero zero. What? Three. 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 Yeah. Man. And that's a well, that's a hundred thousand. That's a hundred thousand. We only have to be point zero 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 three, and that's what's that? Ten? Is that ten thousand? Ten thousand. Man, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with point. It's not even one percent. We're semi-viral. We're not even, we don't even have to semi-viral. aim for semi-viral. Well, I don't even know if it's semi-viral, but <laughs> like it just no. makes you like how hard it is. How hard is it to get like that percentage of the pie though? <laughs> <laughs> pretty hard to give that position. we're sitting at about four views on youtube yeah. more on facebook but we are a podcast let's remember that yeah doesn't matter about that it's, i reckon it's, we i reckon it's what, we're on most our way of our listeners listen to we're us on our way. via podcast i don't even know if um does alexander know that um song we're on our way to misery and happiness uh-huh uh-huh <laughs> do you know that song no. what so it must be an aussie song oh maybe i, I thought know. i thought you were doing um <laughs> Uh, 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 I like it. Uh, 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 that's the way. Uh, 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 I like it. <laughs> <laughs> We're on our uh. way to misery. <laughs> <laughs> um, looking back on this stuff, this year, not just on the podcast. If you look back at your year, 
Um, what is uh, something that you are proud of? Personal achievement. Personal achievement. Wait. Personal achievement. Oh, goodness. I, I think you have a lot. I think you have a lot to be like happy about yourself. Yeah, but that's just so boring. Is it? Is it boring? Yeah. Oh. Like, I didn't think it was boring. What are you proud of? Well, I'm pretty proud of. Um, I started something that I that took a lot of, like a big step for me uh, out of my comfort zone to do. And that was to to start my journey in, in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Mm-hmm. That was a massive, massive, massive. Because when you get to a certain age, you get very, very comfortable. I got mm-hmm. very, very comfortable in, like, I go to work, I come home, do nothing and go home. Like, you know what I mean? You just do, you you get into a routine and it's, you're comfortable. And then I was like, you know what? I've started this, I've started this, um, we've started this podcast. And I'm like, that's one aspect. I'm going to push in all aspects of my life. <laughs> and so, then I started, I started this BJJ thing, right? Can I tell you how my first story of BJJ? <laughs> Can I tell yes, you? Right. Please. So I rocked up to this um to this gym right and this gym has an elevator right you go in the elevator you go up two floors this is the old gym you go out of the elevator and you are surrounded by people not not people old men right when you say old how how old is old okay so i'm talking about like they're 20 to 30 to 40 to 50 there's some of the 50 in Wait, there right 20 year old is not old i i said 20 to 50 okay anyways and they're wearing geese. <laughs> and when you think about geese, you think about the karate kid. You think about ha, ha, right? Ha, ha. You're doing all this stuff. So I'm straight away, I've rocked up and these guys are wearing belts and I'm intimidated straight away, right? And I'm just standing there looking at this class. And the professor comes walking over to me. His name's Jason. And he goes, hey, mate. Hey, mate. How you going? And he shakes my hand and I'm thinking, this guy has got the roughest hands, the strongest hands ever because he gripped my hands and I went, holy shit, <laughs> he's going to break my hands. <laughs> and um, he goes, oh, what are, you, what are you thinking about doing here? I go, oh, I'm thinking about taking this up. And he goes, oh, what do you want to do? I go, I just, I want to watch. I want to watch. And he goes, oh, okay, cool. And the class was about to finish. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. And anyways, there was two professors there. George was the other one, right? George comes up to me, he goes, oh, so you want to try this out? And he goes, yeah. He goes, yeah, one day I'll come back on Saturday. He goes, no, no, try it now. I went, oh, no, I haven't got the gear ready. He goes, yeah, I'll get something for you. And I went, oh, no, no, I, I got to, he goes, no, no, come. And he grabs me by the shoulders <laughs> and he goes to the, uh, the to the change room and he goes, he gives me this, um, the, like the shorts because it was no, no, no gi. So I wasn't, it was just a normal uh, class without the gi. So yeah. without the karate, the karate um, thing, right? Uniform. Uniform. So I go into the change room and I put on this shirt and like I was a bit of a, I'm still a bit tubby now, but I was extra tubby when I started this first lesson, right? <laughs> and this this rashy that they put on is skin tight. He must have got me an extra small. <laughs> so my belly's hanging out the bottom and I'm like, oh man. And the shorts that he gave me was a size too small. Oh, so I couldn't even no. close because it's got Velcro at the top. And my, I couldn't close it, so my undies were showing, right? And I had to tie, I had to tie a knot so it wouldn't come apart. Because as soon as I bent down, I could hear the Velcro stripping off, and I was like, "Oh man, my first, like, my first, I was like, what the hell?" So your undies are showing out the top of your shorts, your and my belly's, belly's hanging, hanging out, out the, the bottom, <laughs> and my bum cracks out the back, right? So, anyways, this is my first, and then he goes, "All right." Um, <laughs> No instructions. He goes, just um, like follow every, what everyone else is doing, right? So everyone's doing these roles. Man, can I tell you, when you're comfortable, you're inactive. You don't do anything. You're comfortable. <laughs> you don't do anything. You just come home and you eat chips. <laughs> so this guy goes. AKA crisps. <laughs> this guy, uh, George goes, all right, guys, we're going to roll. And I was like, and when he meant roll, he meant like forward roll. And I was like, I see these guys and I'm like, forward roll? I did my first forward roll and I haven't heard that many cracks. 
right? <laughs> in my life, I thought the building was going to collapse. It was my bones cracking, rolling oh on this gosh. mat. It was horrible, right? And I just, I was like, I looked at the at my clothes on the bench and I was thinking, I can just I, like, Dine Strip and dash. Off. Yeah, I'm going, <laughs> right? Um, and then they started to do these um, crocodile walks, uh, crocodile. Anyways, they were doing these warm-ups. And all of a sudden they said, right, everyone sit down. I'm going to show you a technique. <laughs> show you a technique. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm watching these guys. I'm watching them and I'm going, they, they, they grabbed you by the neck, right? And they choke you out. <laughs> this is my first experience of BJJ, right? They choke you out. And I'm like, I looked at the guy that was getting choked out and I said, you're letting him do that to you. Why? <laughs> Why are you letting him do that to you? <laughs> this is my first experience. And I've gone, I've gone, what the hell is going on? And then go, all right, time to partner up and let him do it to you. So this guy starts choking me out. <laughs> I'm like, I go, I go, what the hell? What the hell? And then I got to do it to the other guy, right? But I was doing it totally wrong. Anyways, <laughs> anyways, it was the best, the best night, right, I've had in a long, long time and like in in a challenging way, right? And I never stopped going since, right? Like it was it was the start of something far out. Pretty, pretty, pretty incredible. I feel. Very good, Dev. Yeah. Very good. What, um, well done. I'll tell you what. What about that moment? What about that that experience? Was the thing that made you go, "Yeah, I want to come back to this." It was challenging. So I've always been a competitive person, highly, highly competitive, and I've always had like um, basketball or soccer or touch football or something that would challenge me to like push myself, right? And then uh, with all those sports, I sort of just. I've reached what I could reach in them because that's it. My body was starting to break down <laughs> and it's like a team sport. It's like, I've never done anything that's individual and this, and this whole like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is pretty much just a personal journey. And like you push yourself as much as, as far as you can push yourself. There's no, like, there's no, there's no one to like lean on. It's like, it's up to you. And it was like really, it was like refreshing. It was like, oh, you know, I can do this. <laughs> and like six months down the track, I'm still shite. <laughs> no, you've got I'm two still, stripes now. Yeah, it's still shite though. Two stripes is like, yeah, you're here, <laughs> but you're still shite. <laughs> but I love, I love every moment of it. Like I haven't. It's just weird. I still find it weird that I go to a place where I want to someone. To choke me out, or I want to choke someone out. And at the end of it, you shake hands. Well, you know, my my thing throughout my whole schooling career, career, my whole schooling thing was De Devon has the potential. And Always the potential, but but no no, no subject, <laughs> no career path, <laughs> not not potential in something. No, just, he has just general general potential, potential. and I'm like, oh, um, is it a proton or a, a, a neutron that has but that has stored energy? So I'm just got this energy, <laughs> and I'm waiting, <laughs> so waiting for something to happen. <laughs> ah, there's all the potential. <laughs> I've always had potential, and I was like. And my parents never understood. They go, to do what? <laughs> what is this guy going to do? Mama just talks too much. I could, I could see that. I could see that. I could see that. <laughs> but it was only to my little friends. Like, yeah, It'd be uh, weird if you were talking to, <laughs> to people that you didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> to put like... um. At the time, I think, I just think about like the, you were talking about like your teacher who was 30 and living at home and thought it was weird. Like when you're that age, like you really don't have a concept of age. Age. Because I was he thinking about this. so like, um, old to me. Not to go into details of, of the character, but Mr. Hubble, 
I was trying to put telescope. <laughs> so, oh yeah, not to go into telescope. detail, but Mr. Hubble. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Hubble. What was his um, last name? No, when that I say that, I mean, what is his first like, name? Stephen. Sean. <laughs> I think you just made that up completely. <laughs> Stuart. Stuart. <laughs> it was Stuart Hubble. So, it was an S word. So it's like Alexander's like, I don't want to put any details out there, but we'll just call him S Hubble. Um, Stuart. Or, or well, that's a bit too obvious. We'll call him Stuart H. <laughs> <laughs> No, but I, when I said that, I mean, like, I don't want to go into the other thing that we could talk about. Emma knows what I'm talking about. Oh, um, anyway. is that the guy? That's the Maybe, guy. Maybe, may not be. I oh, can, either, I can either confirm or deny. <laughs> this guy, he... Um, this guy. Or the teacher. So, recently, um, saw that he's 50. He's now, now he's 50. Oh. And when I saw that, I was like... I could have sworn when I was in school, he was, he was like close was to old. fifty. <laughs> yeah, like I don't get that either. That's so like then you I'm, said I'm one I'm of like, the nuns. I tried to, but in my head, I like worked back the maths. I was like, well, I left school. It's now like thirty. It's thirteen years ago. So when I, when I left, that means he was only he was like thirty seven, like the oldest. And then that means when I means was at school, he was when my sister was there. Thirty two. He was younger. Yeah. Younger than you are now. Yeah, that's bizarre. Oh, man. That's so strange. <laughs> really strange because he probably looks the same. Talking about ages yeah, exactly. and that, like when I see uh, um, boys or girls, at like when they say they're 18, right, they look like to me like they're not allowed in bars yet. Yeah. They look that young mm-hmm. to me. So when I go into a bar... And I see, I see like an eighteen-year-old girl or girl or boy, and I go, "Man, has your like? Are you sure you're eighteen? Who checked your ID? You mm. look so yeah. young." Yeah, I think that was me. Eighteen does look really day. young now. Eight, yeah. No, but no, they look like kids. Yeah, they act like like kids. not, uh, but I mean like actual kids yeah not, yeah but like don't you feel like with the kids. makeup and everything they actually look older the girls no, no. they look there's so something young. really young about the way they look oh. and it's like like it's, it's almost like it's almost like immature has a visual yes yes immature has a <laughs> has a smell i get what you're saying though <laughs> but it's you know what but at the time really you don't see that because that... everyone's around that age in the club Yes, but I'm when, saying what, now. When you're 18. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm saying now. Yeah. No, I get you. Alexander and you, like, you talk about interviews and stuff. Oh, yeah. I've only had one interview. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right? I've only had one interview <laughs> and it was just for to get an apprenticeship, right? <laughs> and I thought I bombed it, right? This is Trady Dev over this here. Is, this, is, this is Trady Dev. And then, <laughs> um, so they had, um, they had tools in front of me and um, like objects. What, on the, in- at the interview? Interview. And they said, what a, name these objects on the table. What? Yeah, I don't know what they were, right? <laughs> And then um, they said there was a nut and a bolt and all these kind of um, uh, tools needed for the job. And uh, I pretty much, I pretty much got every single one of them wrong. Right? I don't know what the <laughs> frick was going on. Right? They go use the tools needed to put this bolt together. And I was like, put the bolt together? What the frick are you, doing, are you talking about? Right? And then they, the reason, I, the only reason I think I got the job, the only reason. Was because they asked, "Do you know how electricity works?" <laughs> and it's it's funny what sticks in your head. But you remember from, thing from science in physics, class in physics. <laughs> I think it was in physics that I learned this. It had to be physics because that's all I had in year twelve or oh, year eleven. Anyways, they explained the distribution of electricity, right? And the way that I explained it. I looked you up. Sounded like a, you sound like a, a Yoda. It, it, it's it's I because I could see the picture of the textbook. <laughs> Your little drawing. In my head. With when the this, light bulb and the... Yeah. No, not the light bulb, like the transformer and how it... like. Oh. Yeah, it was just like the way that I explained it and they were... 
I looked at their faces and it seemed super impressive. So I think they <laughs> they forgot about how I just couldn't use my hands. And they said, eh, you'll learn it on the job. <laughs> <laughs> that and is that's so the bizarre. only thing I remembered, the whole thing. That's like going into a hairdressing um, interview and they're having like scissors <laughs> and dyes and the lady sat in a chair and then yeah. go, right. Now show us how you'd cut someone's hair. Like, wait, what? I mean, uh, you know what? That's <laughs> for the apprenticeship. That's I mean, that's more relevant than sit down and ask them questions. I mean, I guess so. Very pretty oh, scary. Man. I was like, man, you should have seen me when I walked out of that thing because oh, a precursor to that bloody interview, right? I didn't have a car, so I got off at the train station and then I walked, and I thought it was like five minute walk. It was a twenty five minute walk. On a 40 degree day, and I had a Ooh. full suit oh, on, right? No. I walked over fields. I saw cows when I walked into this Wait, interview. Where was it? it was in what Warrington. Like oh. out out west, west. They had like cows there. And I was like walking <laughs> past and going, where the frick am I going? I saw a snake <laughs> out that way. Oh. Anyway. Anyway. I walked uh, I and, and the secretary, the secretary, she saw me, right? And the thing is, I saw the other interviewees. And they had bloody jeans and boot, like um, cow boot shoes on and stuff, and a, <laughs> and a flannel shirt. And I was like, why am I wearing a suit and tie? What the hell? What Were I, they what all job? like really young as well? Yeah. Everyone was young. Everyone was young. That guy. I wanna, that guy. You're talking about that. Like, I want to know attire in interviews, like if that's going to change. Because like, I'm thinking about this, like coding interviews for me. Coders don't wear suit and tie. Like, do I have to show up to an interview in a suit and tie? I always like, think wow. about this now because yeah, I've I always think... turned up to interviews like in some sort of suit pants or a, a like a blazer jacket or something. But I'm like, I wonder if other people just wear smart casual. Like, like I don't know. Still work attire, but not so formal. Mm. Like, should you, yeah, should you reflect to the job that you're doing in the way that you're dressed? Mm. Or do you reflect well, your... Well, what would you say to your clients that you're trying to... What, what's their, the attire that you tell them to wear? Suit and boot, like. Like, proper suited up. Yeah, yeah, because you got it's the industry as well, so that's what they wear anyway in the offices. Right. Um, so that's what they're going to be wearing. So that's what I mean. Like, reflect the should should you reflect the job because the type of jobs that we recruit for, that's what. The, or that's reflect what they the would coder wear. you are. You what you do is you, you check up the, the company and see their little uh, gallery I, pictures and what type of clothes with, um, they wear. Rock up with a hoodie, my headphones on. Is that what kind like, of coder you are? Yes, I see that's it. What I'm, I'm going to be. <laughs> 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 I see it. And his backpack and he's just like Oh, that's like um you know how we were talking about interviews and that. Like there's a there was an NRMA um and that's a what's that? Insurance NRMA. company. Yeah, but um they have cars, homes. <laughs> hang on a sec. They help people that break down. <laughs> they have a breakdown roadside uh, assistance. Roadside road assistance. Roast, yeah. So this there's a commercial where this guy um He's going to his interview, right? But he sees an old lady that has um, uh, his her wheels gone flat, so he, sh- he changes the wheel, but it's pissing down. Anyways, he keeps going to the interview, um, and then he sees another car that's broken down, and he tries to um, he opens up the bonnet and he he splashes tightens up and oil splashes all over his chest, right? Anyways, he gets to the interview place and he sees all the candidates are still in their suits and stuff. And then he goes into the interview and then like they cut away and then you see him in the NRMA outfit because Aww. like you it know showed I mean? that he, he was showed like, that he it's in him. Oh that's bad. lovely. Not nice yeah. ad I like NRMA. I actually work there as well. <laughs> 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 um Wow. I think it's about that time, you know. Yeah. No, I honestly don't. I, I looking back, I reckon the most proud moment I've had is actually doing my um my teacher placement. Yeah. Because I was terrified, <laughs> actually terrified. And on day one, I messaged Dev like because I was so I just felt I've never had this feeling where you feel so out of place. And I was in the um lunch room or the the teachers' staff room. And it was the first break and I was by myself 
and I was just overcome with just anxiety and I've never really felt that before um, to that level. And I was sat there and I was just like, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know where to look. I did not know where to look. I was like... Did I give you some good advice? I think you did. Do you remember, remember what it was? <laughs> do you remember the advice I gave you? I have a really bad memory. No, what was it? I don't know. It was something inspiring. I messaged him and I was like, this is the worst feeling I've ever had, like, that I can remember. I just feel so awkward. Like, it was just the most horrid thing. But anyway, it got better from there in the staff room. <laughs> and... um. And I had like the most amazing time with the kids, year yeah, one class. Because you stopped focusing on the, the, the like the the stuff that you couldn't control, and you focused on what you could control, yeah. which is how much effort and energy you put in with the kids. Yeah, I was super tired, but it was way worth it. And I was like, yes, this is the career choice for me. So was Thank it um, was it a bit of imposter syndrome? Fake it till yeah. you make it. Is that what you mean? So yeah, like imposter syndrome where you're in a position I think um a lot of famous people feel this, but like when you're if even if you get promoted or something like that, where you're just like, I I shouldn't be here. Like this isn't oh. I'm not qualified or I'm not yeah. I don't I don't know what I'm doing or mm-hmm. something like that. Oh, Is definitely like that? felt like that. But they but at the same time not because it was I was a great like I was a student teacher, so I even had a bad student teacher or whatever it said. Um, so they knew I'm new. They knew that I was new. Emma had a, such a big impact on these kids. They wrote her a song. Oh. What do you mean? Oh. They did. They wrote me a song. They're so cute. They wrote it was her lovely. Song. And then the, this guy came out to like visit from the union. He was like, quit whatever job you're doing now. We need you in the teaching thing. And I was like, that is so sweet. But then I had that imposter syndrome again. I was like, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> like, what the hell? And then I'm like, I just want to run away and not do this. Like, this is going to be too like challenging. But yeah. I'll tell you what, give us, give us, a, uh, give us a memorable interaction moment with a child during your time okay my the one that sticks out is this child who oh, i can't really say too much on here can i though um he's having he's a little had some issues and he didn't want to do his writing his spelling words and everyone else was doing them and he apparently just never really just never would do them okay so i sat with him and i was like what's up and he was just like looking at me like you know didn't really want to say anything and I'm like you don't want to write your words and it was like rainbow letters which is like words in different colors and he was like just didn't pay me any attention and I was like hey why don't we make this into a fun game I was like you see that Fitbit on your arm there let's time you and see if you can um do your do all your spelling words in like five minutes and then tried to make it really fun and his eyes were just like I said go on set your timer so he set it and then like I would pass him the different colored pencils and then he would write his letters and I was like oh how long have you got left are you gonna make it and he's like yeah yeah I'll make it and he he wrote every single spelling word and it was the first time because I flipped back through his book it's the first time he'd done that like like ever I think I'm not sure as far as I was going and I was like oh I just felt so like it was so sweet it was lovely I don't know there we go she's in the right field yeah definitely in the right field you know one thing Uh, one thing with Emma right and she's like because I was I'm a pretty hard nut to crack but over the years her stories or like when like I feel more emotional with Emma like being with Emma now why? Because yeah. th- that story, normally I'd be like, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. All right, you're done. Now I'm like, <laughs> all right, you're done. Now I'm like, oh, you really touched that. Like, you really got through. You broke through with that uh, with that little boy, and now you've impacted that boy. You, you don't even know how much <laughs> you've impacted that boy. <laughs> what is that? De- what is this one laughing at over here? I don't know. <laughs> they very quickly realized what he was about to say. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> I changed it. I changed the wording. <laughs> I said, oh, goodness. Uh, t- t- I mean, impacted, impacted <laughs> that boy in a profound way because these, these, um, it's the, all these small moments that really like propel people forward mm-hmm. that you don't realize. You, you just don't realize. <sighs> all right. So. One word to describe 
the way you're going to approach 2020? Effort. Ems? Just one word? Okay. Organized. Organized. Mm. Davina? Acknowledge. Oh. And that will do for our last episode of 2019. Woohoo! Woo-hoo! Thank you so much for the people that listen and yeah. the people that haven't listened. Listen. listen. Not that they'll hear this. <laughs> <laughs> cool to action <laughs> we will be back in 2020 bigger stronger like Kanye says bigger bigger stronger harder softer that's not the lyric oh, <laughs> oh. don't forget to like share subscribe or comment <laughs> <laughs>